everybody, welcome back for another Specic Adventure. My name is Tiffany and this is my 2001 Miata. I recently had the injectors taken out of this car and sent it in for cleaning. I thought I'd share with you the process of how I sent my injectors in as well as what I got back from the cleaning shop. I went with a shop called Dr. Injector located in Sacramento, California. During the process of me vetting these shops, I was really interested in seeing how they clean their injectors. first shop that I actually uh, called to ask about their service, um, they told me they did not provide any sort of spec sheet. Um, that tells me how my injectors were performing before versus after. They told me that I simply send them in and they will clean them and then they will just send it back to me. So for me, that was not quite good enough um, since the purpose of me sending in my injectors were to understand if you know, cleaning them had any sort of effect on the car performance wise, um, also drivability wise. Um, and so I decided to look up another shop, this one being Dr. Injector. Now, on to the process of sending out the injectors. Um, when you're sending out the injectors, you will most likely want to label each of the injectors that you're sending out, meaning cylinder one versus cylinder two versus three versus four, right? Um, reason being is because um, when the shop sends you your injectors back, sometimes they might want you to put your injector that was originally in cylinder one into cylinder two, as was with my case. Um, the reason being is sometimes they believe that um, certain injectors would benefit from going into certain cylinders. So before you send them out, just go ahead and label them um, based on their cylinder number. 2, 1, 3, 4 into cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4. It took Dr. Injector about three weeks before he was able to ship them back to me. So obviously, also keep in mind that when you send your injectors out to the shop, your car might be non-op for quite a while. When I got the injectors back, um, they were packaged very nicely, and as mentioned, there was also instructions on which injectors I should be putting into which cylinder, so that was very nice of them. Um, there was also a flow sheet that came back with it that told me what my uh, flow reading was. So this is the flow sheet that the injector shop sent back to me. Uh, along with the injectors themselves. As you can see here, there is test A and test B. Test A representing the injectors before cleaning, test B representing the injectors after cleaning. Um, and you can see that before cleaning, they are actually tested um, for various things, whether they are out of spec electrically, there is a leak test on the nozzle as well as on the body, the spray pattern, um, flow rate, and um, you know, it marks whether or not these things are within spec. Um, then they're tested for the flow rate in millimeter, as you can see for the four different injectors here. Um, afterwards, on the bottom here, you can see the, what is this, like the, the I don't even actually know what this is, what is this? I don't know what I'm looking at, but there's numbers, okay? You guys get the point, okay? So after cleaning, you can see that the numbers here have increased. So it's 45 across for all four, and this is, you know, in the low 40s. The flow rate between um, before cleaning and after cleaning can be seen here. And then it also talks about whether it's pass or fail based on the um, cleaning afterwards. Um, obviously, it passed. <laughs> um, and then there's also different things here. These are the items being replaced. When I got my injectors back, they actually had uh, new O-rings um, placed on them. So that was a nice touch. Overall, I think this is really cool for those that, you know, want to be a little bit more technical and see um, why your car might be performing 
performing badly or even if your car is not performing badly and you're up there in mileage like my car is my car is t around 250k now um, and you want to see whether or not the cleaning actually helped your injectors which obviously looking at the numbers here um, it totally did this is a sheet that I feel like if you send your injectors in for cleaning this is something that you absolutely must have while I was installing my injectors back into the car um, one thing I actually replaced while we were at it was the brake booster hose the brake booster hose has one small rubber hose on each side of your car one on the passenger side and one on the driver side linked together by a hard line that is attached to your firewall the one on the passenger side was something I had to remove when I was actually pulling out the injectors. And I actually noticed that the hose was starting to look a little bit rough around the edges and it was having stress cracks and stuff like that. And so I was just thinking, you know, since I'm pulling this off the car, why not try to replace it? Unfortunately for the NV2, both of those hoses have been discontinued by Mazda. So what I actually ended up having to do was to go to a auto parts store and buy a generic brake booster hose. Um, FYI, you do want to buy a brake booster hose and not just a silicone hose. If you'll notice the OEM Mazda brake booster hose on both sides, you'll notice that it's in a really weird and unique shape. It's bent in all sorts of U in this way and that way, and that makes it really hard to imitate those bends using a generic hose. So what we ended up figuring out, Tommy and I, um, was to eliminate the hard line and simply route the brake booster hose from the brake booster all the way over to the intake manifold um, in one long whole hose. Um, there is a check valve for the brake booster on the driver's side um, that you should pay attention to if you're doing this. What we ended up doing was slice the check valve out of the OEM hose and fit it into the generic hose um, and that solved our issue. It doesn't really matter where your check valve resides, whether it be on the brake booster end or the intake manifold end, just make sure that it's in there properly. When you fit the hose along with the check valve back onto the car. Um, just test it real quick because we actually ended up putting it backwards in the very beginning and I basically lost all my brake. <laughs> it was like the brake booster wasn't working. So if you found that after you put the brake hose back onto the car and it's not working, just unhook it and plug it the other way around. Try doing that. Basically you're reversing the direction of the um, check valve um, and you most likely will have that working again. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more Spikic Adventure. Bye!